That's one way to get the sorts. Okay. Welcome back to the stock purchases. That is our um, fifth section in the stock management stock management um, just a quick go back from where what we already discussed so if you need more information of the previous sections you can always go back and watch the recording now we have the understanding stock management then also we have the um, flow that we have on the learning center we already discussed the stock setup the stock order and the item management so we are going to go to the stock purchases now um i just want to show you stock purchases okay let me just show you the flow that we have okay. if we look at this picture i'm going to show you the big picture first so you have your stock purchases you have different suppliers that you buy your stock from so normally you will have two different ways of working the first one the supplier you have an arrangement so depending on the supplier payment arrangement that you have with the supplier the supplier you're going to order it they are going to deliver the items for you you have when you receive the items you will capture the supplier invoice and then you have your creditor now you will capture your supplier invoices um, per creditor. The main warehouse will go up, the item movement will go up, and the creditor outstanding balance that you need to pay to the creditor will go up. And then you need to make the payment with a check. Or otherwise, you will have the second option that you have um, arrangements with the supplier that you have to pay first, so you will capture your, your payment onto the system, then they will deliver the items, then you can capture your supplier invoice per creditor and your main warehouse will go up, your item movement will go up and your, creditor, um, your creditor's account will then be zero because you already have paid for them. Okay. Now, you will see the steps is always one is order your stock that will come and deliver receive the stock capture it and pay it depending on which process you are going to follow you have important information that you have to check every time when you receive your stock check lost and um, check on your items check lost purchase price because if you capture your supplier invoices incorrectly your lost purchase price will be incorrect that means your value of your item will also be incorrect okay so make sure that you capture your purchases purchase invoices correctly then make sure the total on your invoice and the VAT balance back to the line items we will come to that now then you have your pack sizes make sure the pack sizes are correct otherwise your unit is incorrect correct item and the quantity so make sure that you have the correct item make sure that your type in the correct quantity make sure that um, with different manufacturers that you use the correct items you can't say with a needle um, that you you can't say if you have um, let's say Say for instance you have a thermo needle or you have and you have a hyperdemic needle. You can't put that on the system as one item. It's two different items. They have different prices and they are manufactured by different supply of the different manufacturers. So make sure if the item has different manufacturers that you have two different items on your system or three items depending on which manufacturer you are using. Don't put that items as one item on your system okay then you have the nappy codes because also with different suppliers that will have different nappy codes okay please make sure about it now if we go to your um, system the good eggs When you capture a supplier invoice, so that's also you have ordered a stock, now that you receive the stock, now you have to capture that supplier invoice onto your system. So you click click on purchase, 
you choose the correct period of the supplier invoice date. So you, you see which date is on the top, choose the correct period, or otherwise, if you work with month, month ends on the system, only one period will be open. And that period, say for instance, the transaction that happened in April, and the April period is not open anymore, you capture it into May period, in the current period that is open. But your, your transaction date will be the one in April. Okay, so you choose the correct period, choose the correct warehouse where this quantity must go into. It will always default to the warehouse that you have set up as the default, um, default warehouse. And then you say, okay, please remember to ask questions as we go along. Okay, so invoice date, year, you make sure that the invoice date is the same date as on your um, <coughs> invoice, the supplier invoice that you have in front of you. If it's not today's date, you type in the correct date. Everything on the screen, work with tab on your keyboard because then it takes you to the next compulsory field. So it guides you of which information do you need to type in next. So then you have your creditor. If you don't know your creditor's um, account, the number that Grix have allocated to it, you click on the Eclipse, the doiki, doiki, doiki. So you click on that one. You search for a correct creditor, and then you say, done. But if the creditor is not here, the supplier is not here, you need to create that supplier. So let's create a new one. We click on plus. Reuse existing account number always. Yes, we are going to take this away. Now, if you have a different filing system, you can give the supplier a correct supplier um, file number. Okay, so depending on how do you you file the the hard copy invoices. Okay, so if you don't have a separate filing system and um, you don't have a file number for your supplier, then you can leave it blank. This is the language of your supplier. This is a really important tick. You must indicate, is this a creditor? Is this a manufacturer? Or is, it a, uh, this is, is this a system? Now, you will always work with a creditor. You never buy from directly from a manufacturer. You always buy from a supplier, and the supplier normally gets their stock from the manufacturer directly. Then you type in the supplier name. So let's say, for instance, clicks. Let's make it, uh, sorry, neat. Clicks. Woo it doesn't work. Okay, so the, you type in the postal address according to your <coughs> supplier invoice. Cell phone number, if you have a cell phone number, telephone number, fax number, contact person that you're always working with at the supplier. Now, this information is really important that you type it in because you don't want, if you have to query something, you don't want to run to a file, search for a supplier invoice or search into your mails and search for a supplier invoice just to contact them. Okay, so please type in all the information that you can. It's not necessary that you have to type in this information, but it will help you in the future to, um, to phone the supplier quicker and get access to the information of the supplier. Okay. Then the group code is not important. We're not going to use that. Um, that is for specific ways of working. If you need more information about that, we can discuss that but that is really big 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 clients and um, grouping certain creditors together okay then you have your bhf number and your hpc number okay then you have your bhf number sorry i see how you do not see the same screen as me please if that happens type in the live chat that you don't see the same screen and you don't what i'm telling you doesn't make sense okay please communicate with us in the live chat that we know that you are with us or not so let me just go back and just explain to you again 
I'm going to say exit. So on the screen, you will see the invoice um, date. You see the creditor's name. You click on the doiki doiki doiki. Then you say plus. Reuse existing account number. Yes. File number. No. Say English. Creditor. And then we type in clicks. Now the postal address and the cell phone number, telephone number, fax number, contact person we have discussed. Um, that is not so important, but please, if you have that information, please put that information in. Then you have your BHF number and your HPC number. That is more applicable to your assistance. Now this is an important part, your VAT. This is depending on how the supplier invoice looks like. Okay, so if the supplier invoice that is in front of you have on the line items that included, then it means inclusive. If the VAT is only calculated on the bottom of the invoice and the line items price is excluding VAT, that means you must set up the supplier or the creditor as exclusive VAT. Now, this, this indicates to the system must he put that on the amount that you are typing in that line item or is there that already in that item line items total okay and then make sure if the supplier is exempt and not registered for that you will click on the exempt that also make sure if you have made a mistake and you did not indicate if it's exclusive or inclusive that and you leave it on exempt and you are VAT registered. This VAT on the supplier will not be shown on any reports. So your VAT calculation will be incorrect. Okay, so this is a really important part that you need to set up. Now, there are three things on the supplier that you need to set up. is your creditor type, choose creditor, type in the name, and choose the correct VAT setup on the supplier. Now here you can type in the VAT number of the supplier, their banking bank account, bank account details. And what's really nice, if you type in the bank account details of the supplier, that means when you capture the supplier and somebody else have to pay for the supplier, when they log into the bank, they don't have to go and struggle to get invoices, to get the banking details. They can just go and look on the system what the banking details are. So and so in the important and then you say save. Post this record, yes. So now we have created a clicks one. Okay, so now we can just say done. Immediately it pulls in the supplier that we have chosen. The GRV number will automatically be generated. And then when you tap, it will go to the invoice number. Now on the invoice, you will have, um, on the supplier invoices, depending on the supplier, you will see that it will start some supplier invoices start with an INV or a SPC or something like that, depending on how do you want to work. You must always make sure that you use the same method. So if you decide that you want to put in the invoice number the INV or the CPC or what the first three characters, alphabetic characters on the invoice onto your system, then you do it always like that. If you decide now you only type in the number, you must always do that the same way. Don't with the one in which you put in INV and the next in which you don't put INV. Then the system will not, uh, not warn you that you're busy creating duplicate invoices. So the system has a check on the invoice number that that invoice number are not allowed to be used again. Okay, so say, let's say INV, one, two, three, four, five, six tab the delivery is only for clients that are using host performance or other um, CJ distributions or some other company that they ask that company to order the stock that company goes to different suppliers get the stock and that stock comes will be delivered to the practice by the different suppliers and the company will send an invoice every month to the to the practice and they must pay that 
company and they must pay the supplier for the stock that they have received. But the invoice is going to be in the supplier's name. So this is a grouping method to assist you in handling that horse performance or CJ distributions in a correct manner and allow you to reconcile every month with them. So if you're using that, please phone your SEL that you can get more information how to handle it and how to create that. Okay. Then you have your order number. Now from here, if you tap, it will take you immediately to the correct um, excluding or including. You type in the total of this invoice that you have received. So the, and the total is on the bottom of the invoice. Now immediately you can see we have set up this clicks as exempt because they didn't calculate any VAT. Now let's correct this and I'm going to say inclusive, let's make it exclusive VAT, save. Okay, let's just go. And there you'll see that um, if I type in here 300, the system will automatically calculate the excluding and it will automatically cal cal calculate the VAT. You must make sure that this line of this um, amount balance back to your um, total on your on your invoice that you have in front of you to your hard copy so when you tap you will automatically go to the code now in the code you can type in the nappy code you can type in the description or you can scan if you're using goodx barcodes then you can scan that barcode Okay, so if you don't have the nappy code and you don't you can click on click on the eclipse you choose the correct one medicinal materials you type in here your item double click on that item then you tap normally on the supplier invoices they will be indicated um, how many packs that you buy and normally they will not um, sometimes they will not show the unit but they will tell you how many there is in a pack but also here on the left hand side you can see how many units is in a pack so that means we have five units in this pack so if I say I've bought two packs and I tap automatically the units change to 10 okay so this price is the excluding because our, we have set up our supplier as an exclusive VAT is excluding per pack so the price that we are going to type in here is per pack so let's say it's 50 rand immediately it tells us the price differs significantly from the previous purchase price the price decreased with 21% this is only a warning. It's only warning you that the price has decreased or the price has increased. So it assists you in making sure that you capture this price correctly. If you didn't capture the price correctly, you just say yes, okay, and then you change your price. Now it says it has increased with a lot of percentage. So And if you do agree and the price did increase, then you just say yes and you go on. Okay. If the price is was incorrect, then you just correct your price. Okay. Please remember that that one is per pack. This price is per unit, and this is a calculated price from that too. Okay. Now, if you receive discount on the line items, you type in here how many discount did you receive on that item. Say for instance twenty percent, and you will see automatically it changed the price to eighty. So do not type in the price here, the discounted price. Type in the price here without a discount. Otherwise, the value of your stock item is going to be less. Okay. Now, we have created that one and we have more than one item on the supplier invoice. Then we say add. Okay. Now, we're going to say class, for instance. We bought a hundred glass and one glass is 10 cents. Okay, let's make it 20 cents. Okay, 
for 20 rand okay then we know that is our price we've created it it's already there we say add again type in the code or type in the nappy code or otherwise um, click on the eclipse now we're going to say medicine Bernardo we're going to take capsules 500 milligrams 20 in a pack we bought five packs so that means we have a hundred pills for 22 rand and the total will be 110 rand so that, this is how we go on and on until you balance back to the total okay so let's take a last one there is 30 that's fine and we say okay so now in this example we do not balance back here on the total is 275.70 and we are supposed to have 300 then you need to fix your prices click on the item and go and fix your prices click on the next one fix your prices if you did not capture it correctly now please just make sure sometimes the VAT will be out with one cent and that is rounding issues then you can go here and change it and you change only your VAT on that item until it balance so the excluding must balance back to your um, amount here on the top let me just 239.75 okay the VAT must balance back and the total must balance back to your invoice you are not allowed to go and adjust the stop or adjust your um, amount here on the top to calculate this for you okay so please make sure that this balance back to your totals on your hard copy file or on your hard copy invoice okay and then you say post you can print it if you want to you say okay print and this is your grv that will be printed exactly how did you capture your invoice on the system it's not that you have to print this you can always look this up on the system but if depending on how do you want to work you can print it and then you are finished close and exit okay so that is our stock purchases um, if there is any questions according to the stock purchases please let us know now immediately that we answer the questions for you and then um, we can go on with the next one in the next five minutes. No, I'm lying. Um, we're going to take lunch now from 12 until 1. And then we will go on after 1 with the sales. Is there any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we will see you just after lunch.